This is a stimulus update and daily news report. Got some big updates to share with you. President Biden's 2023 budget plan gives an additional $14 billion to Social Security. I'll let you know how that money is being used. Joe Manchin shoots down the billionaire tax, which is also in that budget plan. I'll give you a quick update on the Build Back Better and Building a Better America. Also, the White House is exploring new ways of how to bring down the gas prices. When it comes to stimulus, I'll let you know the latest state stimulus checks and the pending state stimulus checks. Also, so two days left to claim $285, only 500,000 qualify, and half a million workers are automatically eligible for new $500 stimulus check. See the exact date you'll get the cash, and I'll give you some other important updates as well. Hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday. If you appreciate the fact-based, fast-paced updates, hit the like button down below, and I am giving $200 to my subscribers, announcing the winners tomorrow, so you still have some time to sign up if you haven't already. Details down in the description below. First up, Biden's 2023 budget includes $14.8 billion for Social Security. Here's what changes that could bring. So President Joe Biden's 2023 budget includes $14.8 billion for Social Security, a 14% increase from 2021. Much of the bump will go to the federal agency to improve its services at a time when it has been challenged by ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. And some groups had hoped to see more in the president's proposal, particularly with regard to the congressional efforts to improve or helping to resolve the program's solvency issues. So basically another $14 billion, but it's not going to Social Security recipients just to help the agency of Social Security. Shorter wait times on the phone, uh, give some better customer service, I guess things like that. But in terms of money to Social Security recipients, there's no increase there. Let me know down in the details, uh, down in the description below, should there be more money for Social Security recipients in this budget plan? Should it stay the same? Uh, let me know your thoughts on that. Then a uh, quick... Uh, or also, also uh, Manchin shoots down Biden's new billionaire tax plan, which is also in that budget plan. This is the one that's going to tax billionaires or anyone making $100 million or more per year, uh, 20% of unrealized gains. Now, Joe Manchin is not a fan of this. Basically, what he says here is Joe Manchin swings at Biden's billionaire tax, saying the super rich can't be taxed on things you don't have. So the argument here is that billionaires are going to be taxed on unrealized gains. What that means is that, let's just say someone like Elon Musk, his net worth is tied to the Tesla stock. One day, his net worth could be, let's just say, you know, 200 billion, the next day it could be 150 billion, then it could go up to 250 billion. And basically what they want to do is tax the billionaires on the money that either went up, uh, but they didn't cash it out. So the stock is up, but they didn't cash it. So that's the whole argument there. And then a uh, quick update here with the Build Back Better. So Senator Joe Manchin says he's open to a new version of Biden's Build Back Better agenda. Uh, so he's been saying this for a while. He's always open. He's always willing to discuss. So he's always willing to engage in discussions about moving the country forward, uh, but, you know, still doesn't really do much. But Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, a.k.a. AOC, says she was never under the illusion Joe Manchin would back Biden's Build Back Better legislation. So this was a lot of drama we heard last year. Build Back Better. You can see in this picture right here, AOC staring at Manchin. Uh, but AOC said Biden misjudged his ability to get Manchin to agree on his legislative agenda. And AOC told Maga uh, NY Magazine, there is a real nostalgia for the time of buddy buddy and backslapping. So Joe Manchin is always going to be willing to negotiate, but whether he actually agrees to certain terms is another story. So when it comes to the BBB and the building a better America, those are still stalled, at least not publicly. We don't, we don't know what's going on. So Joe Manchin seems to always be willing to negotiate, but nothing gets done. Inflation dominates Americans' economic concerns in March. So another poll here, 17% name inflation as nation's most important problem. 4% cite gas prices. Mentions of the coronavirus as the top problem are lowest of the pandemic and six in 10 worry a great deal about inflation leading most other issues. So let me know, is inflation your biggest concern? Gas prices, are you over COVID? Seems like things are kind of dissipating there unless there's another wave coming from Europe. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, when it comes to stimulus money and things like that, so residents in this state could be in line for $500 million in housing stimulus funds. 
This is going on in Michigan. So Michigan lawmakers just unveiled a $4.8 billion spending plan, which includes $500 million in housing relief. I mentioned the other day, I think it was Arizona, there's a lot of different places that are uh, renewing or doing more rent relief programs since they were so slow to go out. Some states actually had to give the money back to the federal government because they were so slow in giving the money to the residents. So we're starting to see that happen here. A new round, so Michigan, another 500 million there. And then stimulus checks to help combat inflation, federal and state may come. Federal and state help may come. So I'm gonna go over the latest gas stimulus checks, what proposals there are, what's pending, what's official. I'll do this as quick as I can for you, uh, save you some time. So $100 per month federal energy rebate payment. This is that $100 per month where they're saying you could get up to $300 per month. Basically $100 per person and $100 per dependent. Uh, the same stimulus check parameters there. They're, this is in legislation or it's in Congress, but it hasn't moved forward. So I don't think, I haven't heard of any vote happening with that soon. Just want to keep it real with you, let you know what's going on. Idaho. So Idaho signed a bill that allocates $350 million, which is going to give a total of either $75 or 12% of your 2020 Idaho state taxes. Then Georgia for single filers get $250, $375 for head of households, and $500 for couples who marry jointly. Indiana getting a $125 one time tax refund when they file their 2021 20, taxes, which by the way, the deadline for that is April 18th. And then New Jersey is uh, has approved budget measures that would send one-time rebate checks of up to $500 to nearly 1 million families. New Mexico is giving a one-time rebate of $250 for single filers, $500 for married couples filing jointly. So those are the official programs. Now these are pending state guest rebate and stimulus programs. So everything that I just said before is official. These are the ones that are pending. So California looking to give a $400 per rebate capped at two cars, which means a family that has, or even an individual that has two cars, you could get $800 for being in California. And then Hawaii, this is a proposed uh, tax rebate of $100 to every Hawaii taxpayer with an additional $100 payment per dependent. No cap there, so a family of seven could get $700 there. And then Kansas, with one of the highest grocery taxes in the nation, uh, Kansas state legislature, legislator, is considering legislation that would reduce its 6.5% tax on groceries. So we're starting to, I think I saw some other states doing that as well. And then Kentucky, they want to give a one-time payment of $500 and up to $1,000 per household if approved. As I mentioned, these are just proposals. Maine wants to give $850 one-time rebate checks. Minnesota wants to give $500 per person, $1,000 for a couple. New York is uh, going to give property owners would receive an average rebate of $970 and would get rebates averaging $425. Those are just for property owners in New York. And then Pennsylvania uh, has legislation pending that would provide $500 million in direct assistance to families, help pay for expenses like childcare and household expenses. And then Virginia would reduce or eliminate the 2.5% grocery tax and looking to suspend the state's 26.2 cents per gallon gas tax for a period of one year. So those are all the proposals that are going on. A few more right here. So two days left to claim $285, only 500,000 qualify. So this is going on in Maine. This is separate from that $850 stimulus check proposal. This is actually going, it's kind of like a hazard pay program. So it's coming from the disaster relief program in the state of Maine and 524,000 employees get it. If they worked during the, uh, if they worked, all right, so if they filed a tax return with Maine for 2020 by October 31st, 2021, then they get this $250 for workers there if they worked during the pandemic. And then half a million workers are automatically eligible for new $500 stimulus checks. See the exact date, you'll get the cash. This is going on in Massachusetts, separate from, 
I forgot if I mentioned the Massachusetts stimulus check, but uh, this is just for workers in line for a $500 stimulus check within days. So this is uh, the low income essential employees will be among those to get the $500 payment. This is just for workers, so different than the stimulus check, it's just going for workers and it calls for checks between $500 and $2,000. And I think June 30th, yeah, so officials hope that taxpayers could get the cash before June 30th. That's in Massachusetts. And then White House exploring ways, excuse me, my throat, uh, White House exploring ways to lower gas prices. Been a lot of talk about lowering gas prices. We're seeing states with the stimulus checks, the gas tax suspension. Here is more of what the White House plans to do. In Money Watch, the Biden administration is exploring new ways to lower the nation's gas prices. Yeah, it comes as several Democrats in Congress call for the president to impose new taxes on oil and gas producers in an effort to try to lower prices at the pump. Gas prices soared following the Russian, uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and the national average is now down to $4.24 per gallon. Can you believe we're saying it's down to $4.24? While the cost of gas is nearly 10 cents lower than its peak on March 11th, lawmakers are calling on the White House to do even more to keep the prices trending in that downward direction. And Jeff Stein joins us now for more on this. He's a White House economics reporter for The Washington Post. Jeff, thanks for joining us. Uh, what type of action, Jeff, is the Biden administration considering in response to these rising prices? Well, it's my understanding that this is sort of a five alarm fire at the White House. They are extremely intensely concerned. They have sort of thrown out all kinds of ideas internally to try to figure out what exactly they're gonna do about this. High gas prices are one of the most salient political issues. People see it every day, they feel it in their pocketbooks and it affects the president's approval ratings quite dramatically. We have reported and Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen told me last week that they are studying a, a, a suspension of the federal gas tax which is about 18 cents per gallon. That really is not going to see it results in the kind of price relief that American consumers want. It's really going to take a restoration of international um, trade because this is obviously a global commodity to bring prices back down. But that and other measures we can get into, they are beginning to look at as, as potential short term selves. So let's get into some of those measures, Jeff, because I'm curious if any of them actually address the soaring price of crude oil or do they only lower prices once you get to the pump? Well, actually, right now, the price of crude oil does not seem like it's the key problem. We are seeing, especially today, prices of crude oil internationally and in the U.S., the U.S. benchmark rate fell for the first time in a couple of weeks below $100. That's a sign that, you know, hopefully... Um, lower gas prices are on the way. We have not really seen, and you know, you mentioned in the intro, uh, you know, quite correctly, that gas prices are beginning to tick down ever so slightly. We haven't seen a corresponding decline in gas prices commensurate with the decline in oil prices. But the energy experts I talk to, you know, if you're if you're getting hurt by this, knock on wood, say that in the next couple of weeks, we should see high, lower oil prices begin to filter through into lower gas prices. The oil prices seem to be coming down primarily because um, signs, I guess, twofold, really, the first one is that the European restrictions on Russian oil and gas that were announced don't seem to be as dramatic as, as appeared at first blush. So the, the shock to global energy is, is less. And second, we're seeing encouraging signs, peace talks um, today in, uh, um, from Russia and Ukraine. If that accelerates, oil prices will continue to fall. What do you think? Should the White House be doing more for gas prices? Should it be lower? Uh, should the White House give everyone gas stimulus checks? As they spoke about, uh, supposedly the White House thinking about giving out gas cars. They didn't follow through with that. But let me know your thoughts on all that down in the comments below. And that is all the news that I have for you today to hopefully brighten your day a bit. Here's my daughter, Bella's tip of the day. Hi guys, this is Bella, this is the tip of the day. Do you like my uh, stress ball? You squeeze it and then you feel better. So, so I'm going to tell you one thing you should do. Do the things that you want to do because that you only have one life. 
Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate all of your support. So as I mentioned, $200 checks, I'm announcing the winners at random tomorrow. Details down in the description below if you want to sign up for that. And all is good. We are actually going to go camping this weekend and just set up a new tent uh, that we got. We borrowed a friend's tent last year and it just leaked so much from the rain and we had to leave at like three in the morning. It was just the tent was flooded. We had to drive like, uh, this is last year, we had to drive, I think, uh, an hour and a half home at three in the morning. So this time we got a new tent and we're excited about that. So I'll keep you updated on this trip coming up soon. And if you want to check out any of my other videos, you could click up here and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, be safe. Thank you for watching.